today we are going to study about the pattern to how to prepare for CET examination so basically my subject is physics today and we'll study how to prepare for physics in minimum time all right physics is divided into two parts so we have the following parts as modern physics and classic physics today mostly we'll deal with classic physics but before that we'll have a preview and overview of the entire syllabus and the marking scheme all right so the syllabus for CET is entirely standard 12th that is your HSC syllabus now there are also some topics of including standard 11th the following topics measurements scalars and vectors friction and fluid mechanics and chapter force okay so this is about the syllabus so we have HSC and also some topics of 11 standard measurement scalars and vectors friction fluid mechanics and force now about the marking screen we have the knowledge that there is no negative marking Hence, this benefits us to attempt all the questions the paper of physics is of 50 marks for 45 minutes let me check 45 minutes <clears throat> okay so now one question for one mark each the question paper will be divided into two parts That is 25 questions of part 1 physics and 25 of the other. <clears throat> now, there are some important topics. and important types of questions that are to be discussed and learned
the highlight of CET paper is the duration for solving each question each question is 0 0.5 54 seconds I know it's too late and it's too early and less time to solve one question but yes we can do it if we have vigorous practice and have seen multiple questions the key to get maximum marks in physics paper is learning the synopsis entirely and focusing on selective important chapters some of the chapters have more than two questions in the paper we have focused on such topics also now what are the type of questions which we need to focus on important questions let's say no, number one questions based on empirical formulas that is direct formula based without any solution now questions based on miscellaneous concepts that means synchronizing two or three concepts together and then preparing a question so these are some typical type of questions which you need to focus on because miscellaneous questions are favorites of the CET question paper setup. So you'll have to focus on miscellaneous questions, especially which have combination of two or more chapters. Okay. The next important questions to be focused are theory questions. Based on derivation of expressions that is we must have gone through MCQ such as uh, the demand the expressions from the given data that is finding relation between physical quantities and options will have expressions in them and we have to solve and correctly mark the correct option The next important type of questions are questions based on
graphs and questions based on pie charts so these are the important questions which we have discussed and we'll make a quick revision of what are the questions to be discussed and what are the chapters which you need to focus now starting from the first we did how to prepare for CET examination on the subject physics now physics was divided into two parts modern and classic physics so starting with the preview and overview of the syllabus the syllabus for CET is entirely standard 12th and that is our HSC also topics from 11th standard which are important are measurements, scalars and vectors, friction, fluid mechanics and force now about the marking scheme no negative marking scheme we have to attempt all the questions the physics paper is of 50 marks for 45 minutes so now one question for one mark each the question paper will be divided into two parts that is 25 questions for part 1 physics and 25 questions of part 2 physics as observed in the recent papers okay now there are some important topics and important questions that are to be discussed and learned so the highlights of CET paper the duration is just 54 seconds I repeat it's just 54 seconds to solve okay so vigorous practice vigorous practice uh, and multiple questions are the key to success okay learning the synopsis very well going through the synopsis again and again uh, the chapters should have like many questions and some of the important questions have been discussed like important and typical types of questions maybe question based on empirical formulas question based on miscellaneous concepts theory based questions graph based questions and chart based questions so that's the end of slot one today we are going to discuss on some important typical and probable chapters and important questions from them According to the research on CET question papers, the following chapters are the topics to be more focused on today we'll concentrate on physics part one that is first part of physics just classic physics and we'll see the important ch chapters and synopsis from them so the following are the chapters now one is circular motion the most familiar chapter second is rotational motion it has the more repeated questions from them third is oscillation maximum questions in the last two years paper have been from oscillation and wave mechanics which includes your stationary waves and your wave motion KTG and radiations so these are the topics which are to be discussed today and the synopsis the two more most important topics are oscillation and wave mechanics which have the most number of repeated questions other chapters which are important are circular motion, rotational and KTG radiations. Okay. We'll start with the synopsis of particular chapters. 
the first chapter to be discussed today is circular motion and their important synopsis so first of all synopsis chapter circular motion first synopsis is centripetal force uh, these are the formulas which are not more common hence brought into your notice 4 pi square m r upon t square we can see m is mass r is the radius and t is the time period <coughs> the next is centripetal acceleration we can say that AR or ACT is 4 pi square R pi T square and M is missing from here because it's acceleration not force tension in the swing at highest point in vertical circular motion is equals to zero tension at the lowest point in VCM is equals to T2 is equals to 6 mg and tension at the midway point in BCM T3 is equals to 3 mg okay so basically centripetal force tension in the string at the highest point tension in the string at the lowest point and tension at midway and tension at midway and centripetal acceleration have been dis discussed We'll talk about total energy in BCM at any point. We have discussed on total energy in VCM that is 5 by 2 MRG but that is for particular positions. Now if we wanted for any position we can say that E is equals to half MV square plus MGR bracket 1 minus cos theta the next important synopsis is conical pendulum we know that in conical pendulum that is the angular velocity of pop is omega is equal to under root of g by h it can also be written as g upon l cos theta which can be further written as g tan theta by r all right again we can also calculate time period the time period is equals to 2 pi by omega so that is 2 pi under root of h by g so that is 2 pi under root of l cos theta upon g that is 2 pi under root of r by g tan theta now some theory synopsis for circular motion we have finite angular displacement it is a scalar quantity because it does not obey laws of vector multiplication vector multiplication we know what are the laws of vector multiplication 
that is triangle law, parallelogram law, and polygon law. Okay. In UCM, we can say only the angular velocity is constant. Rest all quantities are variables that is alpha and theta angular displacement angular acceleration are variables only omega is constant all right now we can say that these are the important theory part which we need to focus the next point in the synopsis of circular motion is the value of Earth's angular velocity. Now, Earth's angular velocity that is omega about its axis, that means its rotational angular velocity, is 7 to 10 to minus 5 radians per second, or we can say 360 degrees per day. That is more commonly known as. The next is work done in UCM is straight forward zero because the force is perpendicular to velocity. Hence perpendicular to the displacement. <clears throat> so when we take F bar dot ds bar, theta is 90. So hence work done is zero. Some shortcuts here. It's a shortcut to determine change in velocity. Now there are some questions which directly ask what is the change in velocity if the angular displacement is so and so. So we can straight away say that dv is equals to 2 into v sine theta by a very very important formula now, number of revolutions is equals to theta upon 2 pi that is also equals to nt the next synopsis is maximum angular velocity of a rotating platform so that the particle does not skid okay so there's a platform which is performing rotational motion and say some body is maybe performing circular motion on that so without skidding what should be the maximum angular velocity so you can say omega max is equals to under root of mu g by r <coughs> now the next chapter which you need to deal is rotational motion and it's important questions so rotational motion is again a very typical chapter very important so important formula is see, these are some typical questions if earth suddenly contracts to 1 by nth of its present size without any change in its mass then duration of new day will be given by 24 by n square. Now we can take an example on this. 
An example is if earth shrinks to half of its present size. So half can be replaced by 1 by n. So the new day will have the duration as 24 by half square that is 2 square in the denominator that is 24 by 4 which is 6 hours. So the new day will have the duration of 6 hours if earth shrinks to half of its present size keeping the mass is constant. Next, if earth contracts to 1 upon nth of its present size that is some different synopsis looks similar to the previous one but here without any change in its density previously it was mass so now it's only density and then the duration of new day is given by 24 by n raised to 5 hours so that is if say density becomes half so rho 2 is equal to half of rho 1 the duration of new day 24 by 2 raised to 5 to 24 by 32 which is 0 0.75 hours now which is the most famous concept of rotation motion that is theorem of perpendicular axis theorem and parallax theorem so the next synopsis related to that theorem of parallel axis is applicable to all the bodies but the theorem of perpendicular axis is only applicable applicable to the laminar body that means if the axis lies within the lamina of the body within the plane of the body say like this so if this is my axis passing from the center perpendicular plane so if I want to calculate about this axis then I need to require the perpendicular axis theorem yeah if I know this and there is a tangent over here so now there is no need to use perpendicular axis theorem we can directly use parallax theorem although the board although the axis is in the lamina so the parallax theorem is applicable to all the bodies but the perpendicular axis theorem is only applicable to lamina body okay now the amount of energy stored in flywheel and the flywheel is a disc like a device which is used to store the rotational energy now this energy of the flywheel is directly proportional to the square of rotational speed say n so e directly proportional to n square which we have concluded from the above statement now 
the moment of inertia of a rod the moment of inertia of a rod about an axis passing from one of its end is ml square by 3 so it's ml square by 3 now moment of inertia and density have a relation they are inversely proportional so if density increases moment of inertia will decrease and vice versa so value of k and you know what is k in moment of inertia we talk about rotation motion its radius of gyration and it depends on location of axis of rotation and not on the mass now there will arise a doubt in your mind that sir k is equal to root of i by m so how come it does not depend on the mass so if we can elaborate this i becomes mr square by m so we can cancel m and we can directly say it depends on r that is the orientation of the axis where the axis has been placed moment of inertia is a tensor quantity now what are tensor quantities these are neither scalars nor vectors but can perform like depending on the situation they can also become a vector or scalar depending on the ranks of how the physical quantity is so moment of inertia will be minimum along the axis passing through its center and this is very very important along the axis passing through its center and perpendicular to the plane that is center of mass passing from center of mass another important formula that is time period for a rolling body that is given by t is equals to 1 upon sin theta under root 2h upon g 1 plus k square by r square that's the end of rotational motion and of synopsis so the next chapter on which we have to focus is oscillation very very important topic as per cet is concerned multiple questions from this topic minimum 3 questions maximum 4 questions from oscillation has been seen in the papers so the first synopsis is if two masses say m1 and m2 are connected by a spring okay so by the same spring two masses have been connected i can say like this and like this so we have m1 we have m2 okay the time period is been demanded at the time period so it has been given as t is equals to 2 pi under root of mu by k the k is force constant okay mu is m1 m2 upon m1 plus m2 please remember it m1 m2 upon 
m1 plus m2 since the masses are in series now if springs are parallel you can say t is equal to 2 pi and root of m upon k1 plus k2 so for springs in parallel we can use the effective k as k1 plus k2 for two different springs all right so what if the springs are in series if the springs are in series you can say time period is given by 2 pi under root of m into k1 plus k2 upon k1 k2 all right now the time period of a body connected to a rolling spring now this is very important rolling spring is t is equals to 2 pi under root of m by k in the bracket 1 plus k square by r square back closed the next synopsis is angular amplitude is very large so if theta that is the angular amplitude during the oscillation is very large then the time period is given as 2 pi root of L by G into 1 plus theta square by 16 I repeat 2 pi under root of L by G this is not in root 1 plus theta square by 16 so we discussed time periods and different conditions for time period in the chapter oscillation. Now, another formula for time period of simple pendulum. So time period of simple pendulum if it has infinite length is infinite length so the length is not finite so what happens t is equals to 2 pi under root of r by g which is taken as 86.4 minutes the next synopsis is value of displacement that is x for you when the time period is t by 8 so at that point x is equals to 0 0.7 times the amplitude where a is amplitude now the value of time period t when the displacement x is equals to a by 2 is t by 12 all right next all simple harmonic motion are periodic very very important all simple harmonic motions are periodic but all periodic motions are not as see if length of simple pendulum increases by x percent then time period 
increases by x upon 2 percent if length of simple pendulum increases by x percent the time period increases by x by 2 percent and the final synopsis is on damped oscillation that is amplitude of damping is equals to a is equals to ae is to minus pd by 2m and all the data will be given to us so that's all with oscillation the next chapter which is very very important is stationary uh, i would say wave mechanics that is the combination of stationary and your wave function one of the most important topic present in physics part one as per CET and the most tricky one also now we have the amplitude 2a cos 2 pi x pi lambda that is amplitude of a stationary wave the formula for V is under root of T by M we all know T is tension in the string M is mass per unit length for P harmonic the formula for frequency is P plus 1 upon 2 well under root of t by m we all know this is the formula for sonometer okay. the points in same loops or same loop have same phase and opposite loop have opposite face we can say transverse stationary waves are polarized Only odd harmonics are present in closed organ pipes. I you know what are closed organ pipes? It's pipe closed at one end and open at one end. Natural frequencies are also called as eigen frequencies. Please remember it, it's eigen frequencies. So important synopsis on resonance tube. V is equals to 4N L plus 0.3D which we can say that it is the end correction all right and the next formula which comes into picture is end correction for a resonance tube it's L2 minus 3L1 upon 2 L1 is length for first harmonic and L2 is length for second harmonic formula to calculate phase difference We have delta phi as my phase difference. It's 2 pi by lambda 
into delta x where delta x can be called as path difference all right so if we have path difference it's the correct formula to find the phase difference also we can find phase difference using the other formula delta phi is equals to 2 pi by t into delta t so delta t is time difference or time interval we have some formulas say v equals to omega by k where omega is angular velocity and this is propagation constant lambda is 2 pi by k okay where k is propagation constant also velocity of a particle say maximum velocity of a particle is amplitude into omega which can also be given as 2 pi a by t capital A instead Let's go. these are all the important formulas from stationary waves and wave motions now the new topic to be discussed is kinetic of theory of gases and radiation that is ktg and radiation the most important formulas in synopsis has been discussed over here gas constant r is equals to pv upon nt gas constant for unit mass small r is given as the initial gas constant upon m now we have mean free path that is lambda is equals to 1 upon root 2 pi d square and remember only root 2 is in root rest all are out of the root tau is equals to or temperature or oh sorry does the minimum velocity or mean velocity c bar is equals to 3 rt by m that is mean velocity the rms e is equals to et that is translational plus rotational plus vibration which is total energy stored in a gas molecule and this is nothing but the law of equipartition now according to IUPAC we have the unit of temperature as Kelvin and not degree Kelvin so this is not applicable Kelvin is the correct unit specific heat is nothing but thermal inertia specific heat is nothing but thermal inertia at low pressure and high temperature please focus on at low pressure and high temperature real gases obey ideal gas equation remember these constraints low pressure high temperature the real gases obey ideal gas equation for another process we have real gases obeying high pressure and low temperature and that is they behave as perfect gas so real gas behave like perfect gases and what are the conditions that is at high 
temperature and low pressure and low pressure so what do you understand by thermal equilibrium thermal equilibrium is when the temperature is same or there is no temperature difference you can say or average kinetic energy per molecule which is 3 by 2 RT is same we can see change in internal energy can be given by this formula Te which is change in internal energy is W by gamma minus 1 gamma which we call it as a ratio of specific heat that is Cp by Cv is not the ratio of Cp and Cv but only its numerical value that means the numerical value of Cp by Cv corresponds to the, the numerical value of gamma it is not the ratio of Cp and Cv and this its ratio is actually equal to gamma is equal to f plus 2 by f where f is nothing but your degree of freedom Cv is given as R upon gamma minus 1 if you want to calculate Cp from here to get Cp I can say just add R to it rate of cooling Newton's law it is I will relate rate of cooling at C C is equals to K theta minus theta not rate of loss of heat that is how do you know rate of heat loss and by Stephen's formula or Stephen's law is given as and denoting rate of losses R sigma A T raised to 4 minus T naught raised to 4 by T naught is temperature of surrounding now rate of cooling in the universe proportional to mass and also rate of cooling is inversely proportional to specific heat and that's all in this session we'll meet next time thank you hi today's session dealing with physics part 2 and the important chapters and their synopsis so the first chapter which is very very important is wave optics multiple questions are being seen in the paper next is electromagnetic induction electrons and photons and the last is atoms molecule and nuclei so basically we'll start with the synopsis of the following chapters and then we'll go for the mcqs okay so the first chapter is wave optics 
important formulas and synopsis <coughs> we have the these formulas mu is equals to velocity of light in air upon velocity of light in glass or maybe any medium lambda of a upon lambda of g is also sin i upon sin r which is Snell's law now one shortcut you can say it is real depth upon apparent depth okay now if we have question that reflected and refracted rays are perpendicular to each other if reflected ray and refracted ray are perpendicular to each other that means i plus r is equals to 90 degree now if the question is on critical angle if question is on critical angle we can remember that light should be taken as traveling from denser to rarer therefore light should be taken to be traveling from denser to rarer now the formula for refractive index here is mu is equals to 1 upon sin ic where ic is nothing but your critical angle of incidence all right <clears throat> so the next synopsis now is the wavelength range of visible light the wavelength range of visible light is from 4000 angstrom unit to 8000 angstrom unit please remember it's from 4000 angstrom unit so 8000 angstrom unit it comes in mcq also now the frequency is for the corresponding values are so corresponding frequencies you can say that zero point seven five into ten raised to fifteen hertz to three point seven five into ten raised to fourteen hertz <clears throat> the speed of light in vacuum is given as one upon under root of mu naught epsilon naught with this formula has been discussed in the chapter electromagnetic waves in standard 11th where mu naught and epsilon naught are permeability and permittivity free space now we can say the shape of the wavefront depends on the nature of source depends on the nature of source if the angle of incidence is changed then for some particular angle some particular angle of incidence 
the reflected light is completely plane polarized. The speed of a star calculated by measuring Doppler shift is only the radial speed. We see we calculate the recession velocity using delta lambda by lambda is equals to plus or minus v by c. So the speed of star is calculated or calculated by measuring. Doppler shift is only the radial component of star's velocity. Important formula for Doppler shift this is v is equals to plus or minus half delta nu by nu into c that is minus plus half delta lambda by lambda c so these are the important synopsis from chapter wave optics that is wave theory and interference the next chapter to be discussed is electromagnetic induction, important formulas and synopsis. <clears throat> the most important formula is flux is equals to BA cos theta second is flux is equals to L into I where L is self induction and I is the current EMF can be given as minus d phi by dt which is mod of L di by dt very important formula is displacement current is epsilon naught d phi e by dt turns per unit length the next formula stands turns for unit turns per unit length that is equals to that is n is equals to number of turns per unit length efficiency of transformer eta is equals to output power upon input power that is equals to ESIS upon EPIP now <coughs> formula for ERMS is E naught by root 2 which is also known as E effective so if effective RMS effective or RMS value of EMF has been demanded the formula will be E naught by root 2 okay we all know that E is equals to half BL square omega that can also be written as BF by L square also E is equals to BL I sin theta this is the EMF induced in a straight conductor in rotational motion EMF induced in a straight conductor in rotational motion
the next are the important synopsis <coughs> the actance and impotence very very important topic for this chapter xl is equals to omega l xc is equals to 1 upon omega c phi is equals to tan inverse of xl minus xc upon r and z is equals to e rms upon IRMS that is equal to under root of R square plus XL minus XC the whole square so these are the important formulas power factor for an LCR circuit cos phi is equal to R upon Z which is equal to R upon under root of R square plus omega l minus 1 upon omega c d whole square now synopsis we see the quantity i into t phi that is a change in flux represents work Lens law supports conservation or law of conservation of energy. In EMI, <coughs> the EMF is induced in a coil and mechanical energy is converted into electrical eddy currents do not cause sparking eddy currents do not cause sparking eddy currents are produced when the angle between metal surface and magnetic field is 90 degree so again I'll read it it's eddy currents are produced when the angle between metal surface and the magnetic field is 90 degree if the power factor is smaller the energy loss is also smaller if the power factor is smaller the energy loss is also smaller we know this now the average value of sin square omega t over a complete cycle average value of sine square omega t over a complete cycle is half <clears throat> magnetic flux can also be given as n is equals to phi is equals to n b bar dot s bar so this becomes phi is equals to nbs cos theta where theta is the angle between the normal to the area and the field 
we also say that m directly proportional to n1 n2 that therefore m is equals to under root of l1 into l2 current will be maximum and the resistance is minimum If z is equals to r so this becomes x is equals to xl so these are the important formulas and synopsis from the chapter electromagnetic induction the next chapter is electrons and photons now first of all the important formulas the basic formula for kinetic energy that is the maximum kinetic energy is half m v max square which is equals to electron volt E is equals to h nu which is hc by lambda v max square can be given as 2 into w naught lambda naught minus lambda upon m e lambda where w is your work function all right conditions for photo emission 